Welcome to the Lake Show podcast presented by Jack in the Box. It's a weekly deep dive, and I'm talking deep into the biggest stories and deep. topics around the Los Angeles Lakers. I'm Allie Clifton, Chris McGee, Mike Bresnahan. Deep breath. We're just going to start with the fact that this is a very safe space. So whatever we need. Start. At the same time, we do have a level of professionalism <laughs> that we have to <laughs> uphold in terms of containing our emotions. So you know what we're going to start with? How we do every single week. How come when I went to professionalism, <laughs> to you. made sure that they... <laughs> The wrong Zoomed me. in on you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> KYP. That's what we call that. He knows. Just kidding. Um, how we start every podcast. We should have someone in here actually as a guest that was in the control room last night. I want to know what their reaction to us in that shot was. I never asked anybody, so maybe we'll get that because this, this, this was not a good place to be in. Right no. here, this room. I don't tough. know how you did it. I was thinking about it. Like after that game, we're on like 45 seconds later. And uh, and you you just jumped in. I think I told her today. I had nothing on my page. Yeah, because usually everything y- you have kind of the scenarios. But I was yeah. just kind of leaving it open because I was kind of waiting to see what happened. Um, so it's funny. Two two I had two pieces of feedback today. One from one of my best friends in the world said uh, his his message was, "You guys looked devastated." <laughs> during the post-game show, but did an awesome job. Oh, good. And I thought that was super funny. And I told him we were all kind of in shock and had to go on just like you just said. Um, but we were wearing it for sure. And then another dear friend of mine said that I, uh, he saw my one takeaway today and thought I was a little depressed on the one takeaway. So I got to do, I got to cheer that up a little bit. Hmm. So I apologize to those on Spectrum News. On Spectrum News. Yeah. yeah. My one takeaway was a little, a little, uh, I mean, my script, <laughs> seriously, Giselle, <laughs> my script literally so, reads, oh my God, bro. You what? <laughs> my script literally reads, "Oh my God, bro." Yeah, you just no. Other. You were sad last night. Didn't pick up any phone calls. I may or may have not shed a tear. <clears throat> it might have been a late call, but I may or may not. <laughs> President, I had a little moment when we were leaving, and then I got in the car, checked in with you, got no answer, but we did talk today. Yeah, that was uh, that was a tough one. I, I I talked to a lot of people today about it. Um, it it reminded me of 2008 Game Four, a game that I was at. As a fan, Lakers Celtics, Lakers up twenty four, gotcha. chance to even the series, and lost that game. And you just and that was it. They actually won Game Five, went back and got blown out in Game Six. That had the that <clears throat> was the only other time I can remember in fifteen years of the feeling I had last night. So it was uh, it was a gut punch for sure. It also felt like a slow death. It was weird. Like you saw this game slipping away, but it took so it took what an hour and something in real time. So it was just it was just a bummer in that regards. Like to watch it kind of slip away, and then you you know believing you're going to win that game all the way up until the last play was, you know, when LeBron missed the three is when it sunk into me like, this is trouble, ball game. When MPJ mm-hmm. MPJ hit that three off the save from Aaron Gordon, that's when I was like, that- okay. That had a, that was that was ridiculous. That I, I've talked about that play so many times today. LeBron gets the steal and the dunk to go up three under a minute, and at that moment you couldn't celebrate it because you were like excited, but in the same breath, KCP took that ball out of bounds so quickly. AD's trailing LeBron. Jokic is behind AD. So when that ball goes out, now AD's Jokic. chasing Jokic. Yep. So Jok- Jokic goes untouched down the court, but then he makes the worst play. For Jokic, he just threw the ball. He thought he was getting fouled. He just threw it, and it's literally going out of bounds. Austin Reeves goes to go get it. Aaron Gordon's just bigger, stronger, faster, or whatever, just takes it from him. Falling out of bounds, hits MPJ on the wing, and he hits the three. That that was, for me, just a play that defines a series when you look back on it. He misses that. Lakers got the ball. Orders restored. 30 seconds left. Get fouled. Whatever. I was at um, I was at Game Six of that NBA Finals when it was over for the Lakers mm-hmm. in Boston, and I was at Game Seven in 2006 when the Lakers coughed up the three to one series lead and lost in Phoenix in the Tim first Thomas round. Tim Thomas shot that had a similar feeling. Yeah, yeah, that whole that Lakers whole series were, was, it was locked to win the series. Yeah, it was, yeah. the whole thing was crazy. Uh, was it best of five back then? It might have been best no, of five. It was, was no, seven. It was seven. Game out of seven is when because the Lakers were up three to one. You're right. Lakers were up right. three to one. Yeah. Kobe hit the shot to you know the famous shot where he pulls the thing yep. over. Yep. They didn't have that great of a team. Suns yeah. were the best team in, in the West basically, yeah. and Lakers were up three one. Had a shot to win. Tim Thomas yeah. hits that shot. They end up losing in seven. Yeah, I, I was at both those yeah. series finales and nothing. Those two don't compare to this because 
you already knew that the result going into the fourth quarter in both those games. Yeah. Boston ended up winning by 39. Phoenix ended up winning by a ton. This was, I think you said it right, it was a gut punch yeah. for, for, for Laker followers. I mean, it was like, what just happened? It, it was stunning. I mean, you can't say that about the other two series I just described. That was, those were just kind of slow deaths. And Allie, yeah, it was, you know, I don't remember a game like that, a playoff game like that for the Lakers in a long, long, long time. It was just so immediate. It's like, it, it's over. What frustrates, I think, all of us fans, when you look at game one, the Lakers were up 12 in the first half. And you watched that run by Denver, and the Lakers go with five empty possessions, not even hitting the rim, and Denver's right back in it. LeBron hits a three, they go to halftime. Lakers come out, and for the first half of that third quarter, winning the game, up by one, up by three, up by five, down by one, and then Denver just takes control. So you had that frustrating feeling like, man, the Lakers were right there. But wow, Denver could just take it at any minute. So game two, you're on edge going into game two mm-hmm. because you're feeling like, what is it about this team that makes you feel like you have to play perfectly? Well, the Lakers are playing as well as they, I mean, they are absolutely dominating them. Up 20. Up 20. And they just, I think what's so frustrating is they stopped. It's like they got up 20 and they said for the rest of the game, we're not going to do what we were just doing. We're not going to play that style. Mm-hmm. And everything's going to seem like it's work. Every basket. Yeah. There was no clean possessions. It just felt like it slipped away. And Denver went on that run. And then the fourth quarter, even when you're up 8, 89, 81, with five minutes left, everything they got, the Austin Reeves shot in the corner, just like it didn't feel, I don't know, AD was not involved. And, and we just didn't look clean, you know, except for a couple maybe LeBron layups. Like, everything else just looked like work. Mm-hmm. And you just saw it slipping away, and that's, I think, what's frustrating for everybody today. Speaking of Anthony Davis, yeah. there's a couple of things here, too, because when I think about the frustration as well, the thing that automatically went to my mind is, one, when you defend, when you hold Denver to 101 points on their home floor, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you can build that lead, you have D'Lo shooting lights out, you have to win that game. So automatically in my head, like without even going through like the X's and O's and breaking down every single possession and empty possessions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How do you, where do you go from here? Because obviously game three is coming and it's coming fast. Yeah. So how do you replicate this essentially? And right? Allie, Anthony Davis for three quarters had the best game in, his, in a Laker uniform. 32 points. But this points. is what, when AD said, we have stretches where we yeah. don't know what we're doing on both ends of the floor. <clears throat> kind of concerning. It's a huge concern. It's frustrating. He's absolutely pissed, and that's a shot at everyone. That's what it is, and, yeah. and, and you, don't, you can't blame him. Like, he's a competitor. Everybody says stuff after the games. Everybody's in those moments are, are frustrated, and, and, and you're going to say, yeah, we don't know what we're doing at certain times, and uh, that's very concerning because it looked like that on offense, and, and that's – ask anyone, any Laker fan, everyone from Twitter to whatever, everyone's saying the same thing. Like, what, what are we doing? Where's the ball movement? Where's I pick and roll? Just stopped. He played 10 minutes in the fourth quarter. He took one shot, about seven minutes left, a little six foot pull. The one up. That he's falling away with Aaron Gordon on him. Yeah. Kinda? Yeah. yeah. It, that it, it, that it, was a big adjustment, though, that Denver made. Putting him, <laughs> Aaron Gordon, it, it, it was. Okay. It, it, it was, simply but, was. So our, our friend, Richard Jefferson yeah. and I, we had, a, we had a chat this morning. Yeah. And we both felt the same way. Like, I get it. That's for sure an adjustment. Like, now you're not going high pick and roll with Jokic, who's in drop coverage, and, and you're just totally taking advantage of him. But AD is a top 75 player of all time. So, Eric Gordon is not. So my he thing, can still score. Yeah. My thing here is, is, is this Anthony Davis needing to be more assertive in that matchup? Yes. Is it getting AD the ball? Yes. Because, again, we've seen this the story before, the yeah. one shot, the going. And it hadn't been a lot this year, to AD's credit. We hadn't seen that a lot this year from him, yeah. where he just becomes non-existent. In, in the stretch, down the, in the stretch. stretch. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, the last time we actually we saw it against Denver in the very first game of the season. Do, do you know who this is on? I'll tell you exactly who I think it's I'm on. I'm losing my mic. It's, it's, on, wow. <laughs> it's on an entire group, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to single them out for you. Anthony Davis, you are literally one of the best players in the league and one of the best players to ever, ever play the game if you're voted top 75 in this league. You have to go to guys on your team and say – I need some touches. Mm-hmm. I got this guy. I'm dominating this game. I need touches. I have to have them. If you're the coach of this team, and you're Darvin Ham or you're the coaches, 
We are going to run four plays, five plays in a row with AD, whether we score or not, to establish that again mm -hmm. because that's what was kicking their ass. And then if you're the guys on the team that are playing, LeBron, AD, uh, AR, D'Lo, whomever, talk, communicate. You're on the floor like, we got to do this. Let's get AD going. Let's get like it's not rocket science. It's on all of them, hundred percent on all of them. That's a great take. I feel like AD needs to be more like his predecessors, his great predecessors in the pivot. Shaquille O'Neal would have been like, D. Fish, Kobe, find me. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, as James Worthy could have attested, yep. would have been like, Hey, Irvin, uh, find me. I'm in the post. I'm going to take him on a hook or an up and under, or something. And I think AD needs to be more like his predecessors, who also were champions, just like AD. It's okay if, he de if he's a little more demanding. And I think, like, there, there, there's some decent upside to this, I, I promise you, because AD was great. He needs to be remembered in the fourth quarter. LeBron was great. D'Lo, seven threes after making one the previous game. The problem to me is everyone else. Rui won for seven. That's a tough game for him, man. Tough game. He's and had a you tough know I'm, series. I'm a Rui to the, to the yeah, end guy. Same here. Rui won for seven. Bunnies, uh, too. Aust yeah, yeah. A lot of missed layups. Yeah. Austin Reeves, nine points on 11 shots. Just not as involved, right? Not Press? as involved. Second game in a row. Second game in a row. The bench. Again, Torian Prince, the only guy to score off the bench. And it wasn't even that many points. Six points. No one else scores. No Spencer Dinwiddie. No Jackson Hayes. No Gabe Vincent. Yeah, didn't when he airballed a layup. <clears> I mean, that was there, there were some some moments by the bench alley where it's like, uh oh, you know, when's Jared Vanderbilt back? When's Christian Wood back? So there's plenty of, of blame to, to disperse beyond, you know, should AD get the ball? Who should he demand or should teammates look for him? And by the way, Nuggets only favored yeah. by one and a half in game three. I thought that was very interesting. So I think the betting public is like, oh, this is gonna be a war, and you're gonna be there, Geet. That's gonna be a crazy you, game. I'll, you, I'll tell you, you that. You know what, Prez is interesting is I have been one to at least two my friends who talk Lakers or on the shows or, or whatever. When I talk about this series and I talk about the bench, I look at Denver's bench as well. Both these teams, you don't need huge production in numbers from your benches. That, that's right. not how these teams are winning. However, I've said you have to be impactful. Mm -hmm. And when you have zero points from Dinwiddie and Gabe combined in 25 minutes Correct. and then throw and in Jackson. Jackson Hayes as well. Yep. It's not about them getting 10 to 12 points each, but you have to impact the game and you have to give something. Because mm -hmm. at, at the same time, it was still a one possession game. Yeah. And, and yeah. both teams yeah. are led by their starters. Absolutely. Yeah. So it, 100%. It's, yes. But so, they yeah. got to give something. Yep. Mm -hmm. to the impact comes differently. To, yep. yeah. Chris, I mean, uh, Br Brown isn't get, yeah, he, he had 10 points. Like, yeah, he was he in the closing lineup impact. too. Peyton Watson, I don't know mm -hmm. if he scored since the frickin' first quarter yeah. in game one. But he hit two threes in that game one. When we yeah. were up eight, when the Lakers were starting to roll, he kept him in the game. Jamal Murray, three for 16, finds a way to impact the game yeah. again. He's a superstar, obviously. But you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, yeah, both benches, say, both benches are, were pretty soft in regular season, Ellie. Uh, Denver mm -hmm. 25th in scoring, right. Lakers 28th. So you're not expecting someone to come in and score 20 off the bench. But That's, winning plays, man. But, but it's exactly what you said. Impactful yeah. winning plays that the Nuggets bench has had more in the first two games. 100%. Period. They always say, too, you got to win a game that you're not supposed to. Yeah. And honestly, yeah. that was one for Denver that, that they weren't supposed to win. They uh, stole it. They got yeah. it. Well, you know what's interesting? I kept thinking about, and I, I should have just done a quick dive and looked at last year's game, but I can remember sitting in these seats. I can remember the feeling I had after game two in the Denver series last year because the Lakers had that game. Mm -hmm. AD did not have a good offensive game in game two. They ended up Jokic hitting a crazy three. Murray didn't do much, but got hot at the end. The Lakers had that game absolutely won. They outplayed them from start to finish mm -hmm. and lost. And it was a horrible feeling coming home. But then I thought, that's okay. Lakers are going to get game three. And what impressed me the most, and I've said it here before, was the way Denver played in game three of that series. Here. That's what I'm curious about. Does Denver come out game three and say, here's where we put them away? Or do the Lakers show that they can win this series and be in this series? Yeah. That's what's huge. That's everything mm -hmm. to me. Because yeah. Denver last year came out and Jamal Murray had, what, 20 in the first half or something? Yeah. 17 in the first quarter, yeah, something crazy like yeah, that. I remember that. Of game three. Yeah. I think the biggest thing here, too, is that they've got two days in between versus yeah. the one mm -hmm. day. Because this yeah. is one of those losses where it's not just going to be the physical toll. It's not just going to yeah. be the energy. It's the mental side. 
by do me. Do they believe is, is a yeah. big part of this, Allie? Which, like, it, oh. is that Discord? I don't know what Discord is. Yeah. But was that thing about D-Lo real? That, I've never heard of Discord, so I'm asking if that's a thing. Okay, so I guess there's another social media okay. platform, and, and he basically is saying, hang with us. We're going to win this series, right? Hang with us. We can do this. Good. Believe in us. Okay. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not inside their heads. I'm not inside that locker room. I would hope that they have enough experience in that locker room and enough uh, – they have Hall of Famers in that locker room to believe that they can win this series. But you, you, you have to absolutely believe. I mean, Braun played, what, 48 minutes in game four before getting swept last year? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. The Western Conference Finals? Oh, no, he, he – so he's definitely going to, as the leader of a team. For sure. And if, you know, I remember when the Red Sox beat the Yankees, they, they never beat them. They always got beat. And uh, every single year. And they hadn't won a World Series in 100 years. And, and there's documentaries on it and all that stuff. And they, they were down 3-0. They were down 3-0. Dave Roberts, who's now the manager of the Dodgers, stole mm -hmm. second, was almost out by an inch. They ended up winning that game. And, and there's, there's in that documentary somewhere, forget when they get, it's like the guys are out in the field and they're mic'd up. Euclid or somebody is, mm -hmm. is talking. He's like, if we just get today, <laughs> you get today, you got chilling on Monday. You got, you know, he was breaking it down. Like if you do this, so like the Lakers, if you just get game three and Brez, you and I have been saying this for, uh, uh, ad nauseum. If you just get one to change this narrative and all of a sudden change the mojo of this series and how this has gone 10 straight games, then who knows? Okay, I want to give you this. Mm -hmm. Then who knows? Yeah, you're right. Oral Hershiser. Did you see this quote today? No. He joined Travis and Sliwa on their show. And um, our friend, Oral, of course, the mm -hmm. Dodgers, he um, was asked about what it's like mentally to have one team consistently beat you and what you can do as a team to switch things up. Ooh, good question. And Oral said in 1988, the Mets beat the Dodgers in the regular season 10 out of 11 games. Crushed them. But when it mattered most, the Dodgers won the NLCS in seven. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, job, and, then, and, then one, and then beat the Oakland A's, who were the most <clears> dominant <throat> team in baseball by far. That's the Kurt Gibson home run in game one. That's right. Yeah. He said, it took us seven games. Maybe it's going to take the Lakers seven. When somebody beats you that much, you got to think about out-of-the-ordinary effort. Yeah. I mean, listen, uh, you can look at the Dodgers most recently. I mean, the Padres, when the Padres beat the Dodgers. Uh, was that two years ago? Or my Padre fans? Two seasons ago? Uh, they, uh, the Dodgers owned them in the regular season. So, listen, we all know that th those eight other games, we keep saying it's 10 in a row. Yeah. Those eight other games don't mean anything when it comes down to this series. It means something because we all talk about mm -hmm. it and the dominance is absolutely incredible and the way it's happened and the way they've killed them down the stretch. All that stuff is, is true. But really, Brez, this is about two games. They've played two games on Denver's home floor. And they had leads in both of them. It is going to be absolute chaos at, at the arena for game three. Uh, I'm envious you get to go. It's, uh, yeah, it's going I, to be. I thought if it was 1 1, it would absolutely be like. I, uh, James and I were like, can you, when, during the game, we're oh, like, right, right, right. can You're you right. imagine Thursday? It could we be even we were crazier. Yeah. Like, it's going to be. But now I feel like it's going to be desperation. desperation so I think chaos. it'll be. Yeah. If the Lakers can come out strong, I think it's upside down. If Denver comes out like they did last year in game three, first quarter and quiets the crowd, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be a battle. There. It's going to be a battle. You'll yeah. be in the chairman's room either way. So yeah. <laughs> By the way, Karina came in today, and she told Jessica, our other makeup artist, Karina, come, you got to come watch the show. It's a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. Not yeah. today. Not Actually, I'm going to end with this. I'm going to end with this. Is, is this the last time Karina comes in to see the no, show? No, no, I think no? She, she okay. said she's enjoying it. But. Are you going to no, come on set today? No? Okay. I actually right. feel like <laughs> Geeter has handled himself very well in this show because of our time spent in the makeup room before. Yes. Which is where everyone spends time in it's, the makeup room. It's kind of the therapy. spot to be. It's the place to be. It's a safe place. Yeah. Uh, you're not judged in there. Uh, I kind of <laughs> I mean, today. there's some judging, like if your hair is wrong. But it's, 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 it's a nice it's helpful helpful judging. It's a nice. I'm saying they can judge us if we're not looking good. And, you know, they might judge us deep down. I don't yeah. know. I just want everyone to know, again. Safe place. That out of all the people that go to the makeup room to be on television, which is one, two, three in this room, people would probably think I was the most high maintenance. Fair. I get it. I don't care. Are Having you? said that, it is not the truth. <laughs> yeah, if you were in the makeup room today <laughs> I don't, I don't think and you ideas. heard, saw, witnessed what I witnessed, Geeter comes in Wait, and it took two makeup artists in 10 minutes to figure out when his 25 second makeup time Bull was going to happen. F and bleep. <laughs> that is Dave was that there. True, I, I was the most accommodating. <laughs> 
And moment. then he then he chose to sit there and talk to me like I wasn't in the room. Let Allie know that I'm here. Let Allie know I say hello and I'm sitting <laughs> right Brez, beside him. It's literally story. as that, if you speak in third me. person. Yeah. 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 Brett's can I tell you the story? Yes. She did a, not a very good job of setting it up. Actually, 90%. Brett, when what do you think? We'll get Kareen out here. Everyone goes into the makeup room. Uh -huh. I usually go there before this show for sure. Because okay. he's looking for Allie. We hang out. <laughs> yeah, we just hang out. We talk. Sure. You know, smack. We hang out with, you know, we're coming off a, you know, game last night that I thought should unify everybody. Yeah. Like yeah. we're all sad together. We were unified. And I walk in, I sit in my chair, this open chair. Yep. And it's I just sat turn. with my drink and I'm thinking, you know, we have a show at seven. His Ollie Podcast Pop. at 4.30. I'm not going to get the little powder on until 6.45 was, was my thought. Okay. Okay. Which, yeah, it's, yeah makes so sense. So Jessica and Karina look at me and they're like, oh, you're here. I'm like, yeah, perfect timing. Okay. I didn't realize that my time was, I was walking in right at four o'clock is when they actually had me on. Jess is I, getting his box out. Oh, She's so getting said, out the powder. So I said, She's Brez, getting I out said, the brushes. Show's at seven. We can do it later. We can do it now. Yeah, Whatever right. Whatever you guys want. You, I mean, you're ten minutes. accommodating. 10 okay. minutes of this. And guess Whatever what? Whatever you guys want okay. was my quote. 10 what minutes. 10 minutes. And guess what? He's sitting in this chair with nothing on <laughs> his face. Ma'am, did yeah. I say, whatever you guys want? Yeah. He just called me ma'am. Yeah. Ma he is so lucky you, you that we are on television right now. <laughs> ma'am, did I say... Damn. Say it again for the people in the back. What? Did I say... That's not the point. Guys, the point of the conversation is that it takes 10 minutes to figure out what your makeup time is. And then you were just sitting over there chomping on hot... What, Cheetos. Cheetos. So oh, I said, Allie, you're crazy. I said to Karina, let Allie know I said hello. <laughs> oh, Brett in the background. Oh, I won't even say it. What'd you say, Brett? I won't even say it. <laughs> oh, do we? I mean, we did We did give each other a cough. Yeah. It's the cough yeah, heard around the world. The I will say that people, they really do listen to this podcast because yeah. they were weighing in, saying that I needed to go to the doctor because they were concerned about my cough. People you sound were really better. worried about you. You sound yeah. much better. Oh, thank you. Um, hey, Karina, uh, can we pretend we're in like a courtroom? Will you point to the guilty party of those two? You don't have to come on set. Just point. I won't even look. Yep. I, I, uh, that looks like a pointing at Geeter. I'm pretty sure that is. Oh, I, no. I'm, 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 oh, I'm no. going to be honest with you guys. Sir. Thank you for, thank you for your honesty. Ma'am. Ma he said ma'am. Ma another ma'am. He, he said ma'am. <laughs> Honestly. You're Bryce, lucky I'm watching your dog. I just told <laughs> the truth. I told the truth. I came in there. Yeah. I sat down. I smiled. Yeah. Doesn't make you How's less high of a maintenance person. Hi, everybody. And said, whatever time you need yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. Dispensing high fives and hugs. And That's it. Whatever time babies you need and... me. Oh, by the way, tell Allie I said hi. <laughs> Sitting right beside you, bro. That's actually funny. Lake Show fans. Listen, tough vibe in there today. <laughs> tough vibe. But you know what? Even in the makeup room. I'm all about it. Yeah. I'm all about it. I'll go right back in after the show. I don't care. Yeah. You'll put me into the lion's den. Yeah. Even though Karina just. I'm not afraid of you or anybody. You. I'll go right back in there. Oh, you want you're going home. Did you just say lion's den? Yeah. Did you call me ma'am and then refer to my space as a lion's den? <laughs> oh, it's your space. I thought it was a it's a uh, communal uh, yeah. space. <laughs> no. <laughs> Should I call it a snake pit? <laughs> I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying it's every it's I didn't know it was your space, but if yeah, you want to continue to all. if you want to continue to bury the hole and then cover yourself up, I will gladly Good. Good. I'll give me a shovel. I'll put <laughs> dirt on my own. I don't care. Put me six feet under, Brett. I don't care, Brian. This is all because Jamal Murray had a freaking shot. It really is. By it, the way. it was supposed to be like a fun podcast. No, and, no. Yeah. Fun. Stop coughing. It's still Your fun. shirt. Not today. Yeah, not today. Not today, I was very Brez. apropos. Not today. Dying. Not today. This is, to there's nothing fun about to the, today. To the turf. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, man. We're not quitters. No. We're not no. quitters. No, absolutely not. Nope. We can do this. D'Lo, I hear you. We're with you. Lake Show fans, remember, Talk you can be a part of the show each week. Feel free to send us your questions and comments. That was their cue to get up and get our bucket or brick to go. We'd love to hear from you. We're going to take a quick break. When Karina. we come back, it's around our Keep bucket or brick. The yeah. Nasty you eye. know what? Welcome back to Lake Show Podcast, presented by Jack in the Box. If you're enjoying the show, you can check out more original podcasts from our Spectrum News journalists on the Spectrum News app. Just head to the podcast section to listen to the latest episodes. You can download the Spectrum News app on the App Store or Google Play. Geet is still actually a little irritated, Allie. I can tell. Just I can tell. That was you know not a long enough After break. calling me, ma'am, I don't even properly. know he's here. Mike. Yeah, I was, I was but nothing. Yeah. Exactly. Nope. That's what I thought. You literally called me ma'am. <laughs> Time for a round of you bucket did. or brick, presented you by did. Jack in the Box. Allie, Ian told Allie me I lived in a lion's den, or maybe it should be a snake pit. Like, what is wrong with you? Don't you live with women? <laughs> the lion's den is just like I was, I mean, that, that was not a knock. Do you imagine snake tussling was. with... Snake pit was, yeah. <clears throat> you earned it, though. You, you know. Any hope for the Lakers' second unit? your friend unit. Sydney's birthday today. Did you say happy birthday to her? Who? Sydney. Did you guys do yoga together? The good doctor, yeah. Did you you did? Her, did you send her a happy birthday? I dropped flowers off at her house. 
Went and picked him up at the place, Growing Wild in Manhattan Beach. Picked him up myself. Used to be owned by the Bakoses. They just retired. Great store. Range for many a six man. With have you had Offset Coffee? Is that right across the street? In Hermosa? No. Yeah. Huh. So yeah, I did actually. Ellie and I'm going to dinner with her. <clears throat> just trying to look out for you. <laughs> Allie, when, do. when we were watching the uh, Final Four together, uh, Sydney, the doctor, had some advice for you. We are going to play Bucket or Wreck, I promise. <laughs> well, the Sydney, the doctor, had some uh, very specific advice for you about uh, avoiding certain foods. And I, I feel like you, you, you've been diving into those foods. When? Mm, during, during the championship. She said... Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. You just... Takis. you Yeah. Yep. The hot stuff. The hot stuff. It's not good for indigestion. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But I crushed it because Jamal Murray hit a three. Yep. Or hit a shot. Um, all right. Bucket or brick presented by Jack in the Box. Take care of yourself, Ellie. That's all I'm saying. Number one. You're welcome. Any hope for the Lakers' second unit in game three? Bucket or brick? I'll go, Geet. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what. If Jared Vanderbilt and Christian Wood really are coming back, as the media reports are hinting strongly that they will, yeah. I mean, it's got to get better than only one guy scoring. In two full games off the bench, Torian Prince has 17 points. No one else on the bench has any. So, yeah, uh, it's it's got to get better. Yeah, I feel like I don't have much of a choice here. I feel like I was it's told a loaded by question. a very influential person in my life to be optimistic and <laughs> to be better during one takeaways. I'm going to say bucket. <laughs> There's always hope. You have issues. Always hope. So what? <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't? The Joker Show now. Show me a person who doesn't have issues. You know not exactly human. what I'm talking about. The Joker now has four 20 rebound triple doubles in the playoffs. Bucket or brick, you know what other legendary center he is tied with. How many? Four. <clears throat> four what? 20 rebound triple doubles. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Nope. Wilt. 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 Oh. Yeah, he was a big rebounder. Four yeah. of them. Chambonese. Plus, he played like 48 minutes a game back then in the playoffs. And Only one ring, Will. Yeah. yeah, isn't that crazy? Just saying, it's crazy, right? Yeah, right? About, yeah. Yeah. As well. Because of all the plumbers and, and uh, yeah, on, I mean, Celtics. Yeah. Got a lot of other accolades, I, though. I'm going to be honest. When they put that graphic up, that lower third, and uh, Jokic had 20 rebounds, I was like, you got to be kidding me. Guy just does it all. Like, what doesn't he do? He is the best player in the world, and it's not close, and he's the MVP, and everyone knows it. Everyone knows it. His brother. It was, so, it was yeah. so hilarious earlier in the year. Yeah, like, did you see like, that? Oh, yeah, his brother is a little crazy. Brother punched yeah. him. But how about really? that guy looked like Dave O? He kind of took it. He just like <laughs> went like this. It was like it was amazing, right? <laughs> uh, he, he's been, he's been in fights before, for sure. Yeah. Flip yeah. it yeah. off, Caleb. Seriously, he was like just like, he didn't buckle. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> took it. Dude. And, and the brother's a big dude. Yeah. I, I, I feel like if that was Dave O, though, he would have. I mean, came back. <laughs> yeah, the guy just was like, okay. I saw Davo at uh, Urkeley's in Manhattan Beach. A, uh, a For the people out there, Davo used to work with us. <laughs> and he looked like the guy that Jokic's brother punched. Yeah. Uh, a, a, someone cut in front of him in the, in the bathroom line at Urkeley's in Manhattan Beach. And he was he was pretty fired up. Like, David O, it doesn't take a lot to get him fired up. Like, brought a baseball bat <laughs> back that. to the bar. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. They have good burgers there, too. <laughs> Murray's game winner is an instant historic playoff moment. Unfortunately, Bucket. I'm sure they've had to watch AD shot in the Western Conference yeah. Finals at the buzzer over them a million times, and we're going to have to see this one a million times. It was a it was a defining moment for his career, and if they win the championship, Brez, it'll live on forever. If they don't, eh, just another shot. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, um, it's not much more to say about it except what AD said. Jamal Murray made a shot. Got to win the title. That's why Rob shot so important. Remember LeBron's bank against, uh, he had a buzzer beater against Orlando. It doesn't get talked about that much because mm -hmm. Orlando won that series and the right. Lakers ended up playing them. It was really interesting. Not even that long ago, a few months ago, Derek Fisher was asked about the 0.4 shot yeah. on our air. I've always kind of wanted to ask him about it. Like, yeah. hey, you guys lost in the finals yeah. pretty, pretty badly that year. You know, does that take away from the shot? He just brought it up organically on the air once. He was like, we did not win the championship. No, I know. It, so, yeah, that's so. why his shot's not considered. It's 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 Robin in magic. Yep. It's yeah. really it. His, it was great, but it didn't. He owned it. He's it like, would have been all time. Yeah. He's like, it was a good shot, title. but it wasn't yeah. a great shot because yeah. we lost in the finals. Whereas that team was down 0-2 to the Spurs. Yeah. And that, that was, was game that five game to go up 3-2. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. Bucket of brick. The Lakers find a way to get Rui Hachimura going in game three. Have to, dude. I mean, I. I don't even know if we have a choice in this, Brez. Yeah, I'll break it just because it's not just him. 
It's it's yeah. Rui. You got to get going. It's the yeah. bench we've talked about mm-hmm. a lot. Austin Reeves, two pretty nondescript games, Allie. I really didn't like four for eleven shooting in game two. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it's it's there's just a lot to go around. It's not. I wouldn't say it's just Rui. It's yeah. There's five or six people. Ten Rui. points total in the series. Yeah. Oh, nice shot. Keith. I just bucketed that from distance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm I'm gonna say he's gonna get it going at uh, crypto, man. Bucket or brick, league's finalist for defensive player of the <laughs> year. Bam, Wimby, Gobert. Like how did Bam get in there? It's brick because AD should be there instead of Bam. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, Gobert and Wimby are good calls. Like the whole thing, like, Gobert should be uh, considered because the team's good, you know, seating wise. Well, how, how did Bam sneak in there? They're in the play in tournament, too. Yeah, this is a big Does brick. record matter? <laughs> And it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Wemby's, uh, Wemby's we, record's terrible. Did they so. finish? Did, were the Spurs dead last in the West? I think they were. Uh, 22 they games won. suck, one. basically. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, they if were they horrible this year. He was Portland. amazing. He is amazing. He's yeah. a yeah. generational talent, but their team sucked. Yeah. He's already going to win Rookie of the Year. Yeah. Just really need to Until wins. they needed to beat the Nuggets to make sure we played the Nuggets in the like first 19. round. <clears throat> On the second and nice slat of the season. Yeah, yeah. The NBA is really trying to get his name out there. Yeah, I, I didn't love the... Um, the uh, Bam Adebayo. He's a fine player, but uh, he's AD should be in there. All right. Is that I'm it? Curious what the tone is for our next podcast next week. Yeah. Stare down. Keeter and Allie. Thanks to you all for listening to the Lake Show podcast presented <laughs> by Jack in the Box. If you like what you hear, leave <laughs> us a rating and review on your favorite yeah. podcast app. We want to hear from you. Send us your questions. Hit us up on X at Relay Clifton at Keeter3 and at Mike underscore Bresnahan. Hey, Brad, do you think he's going to go get his makeup done now? Yes. <laughs> Already got powder on, guys. Oh, you're ahead of the you game. You did not. Oh, did yeah. you? You guys did powder? You were there, but you